In today's Noob to Pro Guide, we're going to be talking about how to play Ganyu the long-awaited Coco Goat. Let's get started. The basic of playing Ganyu is very simple. You just want to use your charge attack and make sure you hold it to level 2, which will give you this very high bloom effect and do very good amount of AoE damage. Your elemental skill will move you backward a little bit and will also taunt the enemy to attack it. However, your elemental burst will create a very very large icicle field that will continuously drop icicle. Standing on this field also gives you 20% crowd damage, so make sure that you are standing in the field when when you're attacking if you do have the field up. Something to note when you're using Ganyu charge attack is that do not use the aiming mode and then do a charge attack. What you should do is go into the normal mode and then just hold your left click button and use your charge attack like this. This will exit the aiming mode and cancel out the ending animation for the charge attack which will allow you to do a follow up shot much faster. Following that up, we're going to introduce the ARCC which is aim or charge attack cancel which means that instead of letting go of your left click button, you manually click R to cancel out right after you shot a shot. This will cancel the ending like much faster and lets you fire shot even faster than before. A lot of enemy in Genshin Impact have a spot called the weak spot where it's guaranteed a critical strike. Uh, most of these is on their head and for rune grey enemy it's on their light and so when you hit a weak spot it's guaranteed to critical strike so you're trying to aim for the weak spot as much as possible now another thing a lot of people like to talk about is oh if you cannot aim just hit the ground and let the bloom do the aoe but try not to do this because the initial shots do do a lot of damage so essentially by aiming at the ground you lose out a lot of single target damage when you are firing your shot currently there's two major way of playing ganyu the first is the melt ganyu which is bennett shangling zhongli and then ganyu the second way is to play freeze ganyu which is a animo character a hydro character, a second crowd character, and then Ganyu. The Mao Ganyu team does very very good burst damage and very good single target damage and it's very good for fighting against bosses. The Freeze Ganyu team does very very good amount of AOE damage and does very good amount of control since you have the freeze reaction and it's most suitable when you're fighting against mobbing chamber or just good AOE in general. Playing Mao Ganyu is very straightforward. You're gonna start by casting the Zhongli elemental skill for shield, Bennett elemental burst and skill, and finally channeling elemental burst and skills and then just cast the elemental skill on Ganyu and you're gonna do about four to five charge attack on Ganyu uh, make sure that the enemy have pyro infuse on them before you attack which you're gonna come from the shangling pyronado and then you're good to go it is possible to replace the shangling with gene here which use a technique commonly referred to as sunfire gene to apply the pyro infusion when you're playing with gene you want to overlap both of the bennett elemental verse and the gene elemental verse so you want to start by casting ganyu elemental skills and then overlapping both the bennett and gene elemental burst which should continuously swirl pyro onto the enemy and this will also allow you to get mouse off attack just like that it's also replaceable with Kazuha, with Kazuha being even stronger than Shangling because it allows you to do something known as the double swirl. Here is a full demonstration in actual effect. Start by casting Ganyu Elemental Skill, missing your Bennett Elemental Burst and then Kazuha Elemental Bursting. This will swirl cryo but apply Pyro Infusion which lets you do 4 to 5 charge attack on Ganyu after. Now of course in this team comp, Zhongli is highly recommended because he gives you a huge amount of defensive option which you need. However, he's not necessary, you can use other shooter like Diano or even you can use the Xin Yan. Obviously their shield will be much weaker but they can also bring other utility. For example, Xin Yan can actually act as a fire starter for your Kazuha in which case you do not need Bennett or Xiang Ling. And of course, if you don't care about shield at all, you can just solve full offense with Bennett, Shangling, and Kazuha, or maybe even removing the Shangling to put in the latest crowd support, Shunha, which gives you a huge amount of cryo damage, and then you can just do a lot of Mel charge attack on your Ganyu, but of course, you lose out all the defensive utility in this case. In terms of artifact set, the Shimanara Remnant set is the best for Mel Ganyu. You lose 15 energy when you cast your elemental skill, but it doesn't affect Mel Ganyu at all, because you won't be casting your elemental burst at all. Now, you you can cast your elemental burst if you are facing multiple enemy and you're also running a Xiangling, but 90% of the time you don't really do that. With that being said, the stat that you want is going to be of course crit on your circlet and then crowd damage bonus on your goblet. However, on your sense, it's highly recommended to run a elemental mastery sense. When you're playing Mao Ganyu, you want to aim anywhere between 200, around 200 elemental mastery. And because the Shimanara Reminiscent set doesn't provide any elemental mastery, usually you're going to opt for a elemental mastery set unless you have a lot of EM substat. Speaking of substat, the substat you want is typical, same as always, attack percent, crit damage, crit rate, or elemental mastery. Again, prioritize elemental mastery until you have 200 of them, and then just go crit or attack. 
Of course, the other artifact set that worked really, really well on Mel Ganyu also is the four piece wonder set, which gives you 35% charge attack damage bonus as well as 80 elemental mastery. Now, of course, because this already gives you 80 elemental mastery and your goal is to hit 200, ideally you get another 120 from substat, but that might not always be possible. And because of that, you just want to use a uh, elemental mastery sand instead. But if you have enough elemental mastery already because of substat, for example, in this piece, this piece alone give me about 160 elemental mastery. I mean, instead of using a EM sense, I want to use a attack sense instead. So that is also a really valid option. Putting Mel Ganyu is very straightforward. If you have a 5 star weapon, just use the 5 star weapon. So whether that be Amos or Thundering Boss, those weapons are all really good. Of course, Amos is the best one, but pretty much any of the other 5 star weapons are also really good. Uh, otherwise, the recommended free to play weapon is going to be the Prototype Crescent if you do have it. Obviously, this weapon is just really, really strong at Refine 5, giving you 72% attack which is a lot of attack on the passive. However, some enemy cannot be headshotted and therefore you might want to use the Havia Yumi bow instead which can also work against non headshotable enemy. With that being said, let's move on to Free Scanyu. Now of course, the Free Scanyu have a lot of variants. One of the most popular variants is Scanyu, Venti, Mona, and Diona. This is commonly referred to as Morgana. However, there's a lot of substitution that is possible, for example, with the release of Shanha, using Shanha in this slot, or just using Ayaka as your second crowd in the slot as well. Of course, instead of using Mona, you can also be using Kokomi, and instead of using Venti, you can also be using Kazuha. And if you don't have the 5-star crowd substitution, you can also use the 4-star crowd substitution, Rosario. We won't be able to cover all of this, but most of them pretty much follow the exact same formula, so they pretty much just all work the same. So let's cover the basic Morgana first. However, first thing first to note is that when you're running TTDS, make sure that your TTDS is in slot 1, so that when you start the battle, you will immediately switch to Ganyu and this will immediately give you the TTDS buff on the first rotation. The rotation for Morgana is very straightforward. Ganyu elemental skill and burst, Venti elemental skill and burst, followed by Mona elemental burst and skill. You want to do the burst first before skill on Mona, just so you can extend the freeze duration with her elemental skill. And then usually I like switching to Diona for elemental skill here, so I can generate crowd energy by switching into Ganyu right after and funneling all the energy into my Ganyu. Also casting the Ganyu elemental skill once again to generate generate more energy. And then right here, you want to do about 3 to 4 charge attack on Ganyu, and then you can repeat the cycle. However, right before you repeat, make sure to switch back to Mona so that you can switch to Ganyu and snapshot the TTDS again. Here, I incorrectly switched to Venti by accident. However, what you should do is just switch to Ganyu and then cast EQ on Ganyu again, and then Venti uh, EQ again, and then finally Mona QE and just repeat. Also, very quickly, if you're running Prototype Percent like me on your Ganyu, then you actually want to do a very quick sneaky charge attack right before you cast your elemental burst as this will give you the attack bonus from your prototype crescent which will let you get the 72% attack in and it will snapshot onto your elemental burst. Very very important so you don't miss out on damage. There's another rotation that you can do which uses a much shorter rotation and focus much better on the freeze up time instead. This rotation does not use any Ganyu charge attack and so it will have higher energy requirement because you want to make sure that all your elemental bursts are on time and so here is how the rotation goes. Start with a Ganyu elemental skill, followed by a Mona elemental skill, dropping both of them on the same spot, instantly freezing the enemy. Cast your Venti elemental burst and skill onto that spot, and then switch to your Rosaria and cast your elemental skill, which teleport you back onto the enemy and cast Rosaria elemental burst. And then just switch on to Ganyu elemental burst and Mona elemental burst, and you are good to play this team. Something to note is that TDDS doesn't really work that well in this team because you don't really switch from Mona to Ganyu, but also because you don't have a healer running prototype. Uh, Amber Mona is just a better option. Although you still could run TDDS if you do want to push for damage, but I will highly recommend running prototype Amber Mona here instead. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to cover every single variation of the Freeze team, Freeze Ganyu team, because there's just too many variations. Again, you can use Kazu instead of Venti. You can use Ayaka as your second crowd as seen here. You can use Shanha, you can use Rosaria, and of course, you can use Kokomi instead of Mona. Overall, there's many, many variations, and depending on which variation you're running, you might want to do your rotation a little bit differently. For example, here, I cast Kokomi Elemental Skill at the beginning of the fight because it has a very long duration, and then I just refresh it using her Elemental Burst. 
but more or less, uh, your rotation will come down to something very similar to one of the two that I've shown. Something to call is that if you can run Venti, Venti is much preferred than Kazuha because Ganyu Venti have a crazy synergy, but also Venti energy refund is really really important to make sure that you can cast Ganyu Elemental Burst on time. And of course, if you're running Kokomi, then your second crowd should be a DPS like either Corsaria, Chanha, or Ayaka. For a weapon on your freeze Ganyu, any of the 5 star weapon pretty much have similar performance, whether that be Amos or Skyward or Thundering Pulse, they have pretty similar performance so just pick whichever one. Amos obviously have less value in freeze Ganyu because you don't do that much charge attack and your damage come from your burst, but it's still a 5 star weapon with high base attack so it's still really good. Otherwise the free to play or just 4 star weapon in general or to go for is of course the prototype percent again. At refine 5 you get 72% attack which you can snapshot onto your elemental burst which is really big. But some Sometimes you cannot do weak spots, so you might want to just again use the high Yumi instead. But if you can use the prototype crescent, use the prototype crescent. Something interesting is that the 4 star new weapon, the Warm Wind, is actually also really good for uh, Morgana Freeze Ganyu because your damage comes from your elemental burst, and this weapon is able to increase your elemental burst damage by a very significant amount if you have it at Refine 5. If you have this weapon at Refine 5, you can actually outperform some of the uh, 5 star weapon at Refine 1, so this is a really good weapon to consider as well. Artifacts Set-wise, of course, with the Blizzard Strayer, you should pretty much always be running the Blizzard Strayer 4 set unless your artifacts are really, really bad, in which case try to farm as much of it as possible. And main stat, subset-wise, same as always, crit, crowd damage, and attack. However, there's something important that I have to call out, and that is on Blizzard Strayer, running attack main stat circlet is actually really, really viable, much more viable compared to pretty much other artifact set. And getting a lot of attack percent from your substat is actually a really good thing. This is because your passive gives you so much crit value, in comparison, you are actually going to be lacking attack, in which case, attack could actually give you a huge increase of damage. So for Blizzard Slayer set, do not ignore attack main stat or roll with a lot of attack percent. This is going to be it for today, guys. It is a much more simpler video than usual, so I'm sorry about how plain it is. I try to keep it as short as possible as well, but I think it is important for us to teach other people how to play these characters so that they can properly understand what the character is capable of doing. And with that being said, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.